So you spend a huge amount of time and effort and energy on getting customers to your site. And finally, they're starting to arrive, but at least half of them are disappearing. You've got a 50% bank spread or even more. The truth is you have 15 seconds, just 15 seconds to engage a customer. That's 15 seconds to get them to buy your product, 15 seconds to draw them into your experience and learn about who you are as a company. You only have 15 seconds to engage someone. The big problem is the competition. There are literally billions of pieces of content out there that would engage and excite your customer, all vying for attention. Not to mention the fact that they'll already have 10 to 20 browser tabs open, ready to switch and make comparisons between you and your competitors. A customer gets the first impression within half a second. So the first impressions when they go to your side are massive. They'll settle on the major piece of content within two and a half seconds. That content has to be super relevant. It has to match who they are and what they're looking for. It has to be massively contextual. It has to fit with why they're on there in the first place and what they're trying to do. And not only that, it has to be engaging. It has to be entertaining. It can't be just dull and boring because you know what? They'll just go somewhere else. You've lost them and they're right out of there. It's literally going to get to the point where businesses are going to drown under a tsunami of content they need to manage. So I know what you're thinking. Great. I'll just use my CMS. We've got a CMS, why not use that? We've got this traditional web CMS, it's one of the best in the market. I can build engaging pages with that. I mean, that's what it's designed for, right? Experience managing and engaging pages. Cool, let's just go through how that might work. Well, first of all, a CMS takes content from a business user, push it through some templates to create a page. And the process for business users to get the content into the template is that They'll need to go to their creative designers, their developers to adjust templates based on the creative design if necessary. They need to have copywriters involved and then further creatives to create the digital assets that they'll squeeze into those templates. And once you've got all that in place, they put it in the template, press the button, it publishes it and cookie cuts out a nice little HTML version. Or what if marketing now tells you you've got 10 segments and not only that, you need to provide content for three different contexts for each of those 10 segments. That's 30 pieces of content. That isn't going to happen. It is impossible. If you've got thousands of pages and thousands of products, there is no way on this planet you're going to create 30 variants for each one of those, let alone how many variants you're really going to need. So what really ends up happening is that if you're lucky, you'll get three variants, each of the major pages on your site, where you want to personalize, where you want to segment, or maybe where you want to have different context, just three pages on average. So what happens is a customer will, will finally get to your website, make a request for a specific page for a piece of content they're looking for. And then a personalization engine will make a choice out of those three pages, which one's the most relevant for this particular customer and they'll take that page and they'll give it to the customer. And that's great because the customer gets a page that is fairly relevant. But in reality, what will happen is the customer will want a bit out of each one of those three pages. In fact, in reality, they'll want a lot more than what's in those three pages. But for now, the customer will want something out of those three pages. But because they're in HTML and because of the way that templates work, you can't pull them out, you can't pull them apart. You're stuck with it. The page is like set in stone. It might as well be a giant stone tablet as far as the personalization engine is concerned. What you really need is for that content to be a modular. The business will focus on creating modules of content that then can be assembled into pages and then published, which gives you far more flexibility and the ability to build far more variants. Take the scenario where you have a page that's made of three different content types and you create five variants of each content type. That gives you the ability to create combinations of content for each page. That gives you 125 combinations. Each one of those is a content variant, yet you've only built 15 smaller content modules because it's all about the assembly. And that's where the efficiencies come into play when you've got modular content. Before we move on, if you found this engaging so far, can you just scroll down a little bit and press that like button? I really appreciate that, thanks. Now there'll be some of you out there going, yeah, well I've seen that on Web CMS, and I have too. You know, Web CMS tries to create content modules. The difference is in Web CMS, in traditional CMS, 
there are assumptions and there are dependencies built in for the presentation layer. There are dependencies into the CSS that you're going to use because you're concentrating on the presentation layer. There are dependencies into the JavaScript frameworks. There are assumptions of where that is going to sit and how it's going to work. If you take it from a headless content point of view, there is no presentation layer. There are no assumptions and there are no dependencies. So it means that you can take that content and even render it in lots of different ways. So not only do you have the combinations of content, you also have the combinations in which you can actually build that content in a UI. It is very similar to the six brick Lego question. If you have six bricks of Lego, you know those ones with the eight nodes, how many different constructions can you make from those six bricks? The answer is almost a billion, literally almost a billion combinations from a very small number of bricks because of the flexibility in which you can actually join these together. And that's the same way with Headless CMS. You have all of these combinations you can join content, but it's so flexible. You can build it in lots of different ways. It gives you an unlimited amount of power in terms of building user experiences. And that's the power of modular content. So that brings me to my next exciting possibility when it comes to working with headless content and it comes to working with fragments of content. What if you could build those modules out of smaller pieces of content? And what if those smaller pieces of content can be built from smaller elements? In other words, what if you could take content and atomize it? You know, make atomic content, smaller pieces of content that make bigger pieces of content, that make larger pieces of content, that make whole pages. I'll give you a simple example. If one of those blocks was a carousel, that carousel could be made up from banners, three or four banners in a carousel. And those banners will be made up of an image and then maybe a strap line or multiple strap lines. So what you can end up with are lots and lots of strap line pieces of content, lots and lots of images, lots and lots of banners that combine those and lots and lots of carousels, which then choose which banners to put into the carousel. Now, the carousel itself doesn't necessarily need to render as a carousel either. The carousel could render as a grid. It could render as a list of blocks, as well as rendering as a slider or a carousel. That shows you the power of what you can do when you start having the content as atomic blocks and elements. So this takes a massive bite out of the burden that you have about creating and maintaining content. But there's still a vast amount that you need to do, even if it's broken down into smaller pieces. So what if you could automate that in some way? Well, you can. If content is atomized, if it's broken down into smaller and smaller building blocks, and not only that, that content is machine readable because it's coming from a headless CMS, you can pipe that into personalization engines, for instance. Then on the fly, when a customer comes to your site, that personalization engine can understand who that customer is, what they're trying to achieve, what content they're looking for, make all of those decisions and resemble all of the content blocks that you've created, all those smaller elements that atomize content into an entire experience and deliver it to a customer. And if you get this right, this could transform the engagement the customer has with your site. So in summary, you have 15 seconds to engage a customer. The only way you can do that is to have super relevant, highly contextual, and awesomely entertaining content. And to do that at scale, you need your content to be composable. It has to have the ability to be atomic, to allow you to assemble the content from elements, from atoms, into molecules, into amazing experiences. The content must be dynamic. It must be pulled from an API and assembled on the fly, so you can automate some of that assembly through personalization engines. And for that to happen, it has to be machine readable. It can't have the presentation welded inside the content like you have in the old days. Because who knows where that content's gonna go? It could be in a mobile app, it could be in a desktop, it could be in a voice app, it could be in any experience. The only choice really is to go down a headless CMS based on Mac principles that allows you to create composable content that can work with the rest of your headless systems. Anyway, if you found this engaging, Please show your appreciation, scroll down a little bit, press that like button, and I'll see you next time.